Hello everyone, welcome back to my Dragon Quest VI 100% walkthrough. Joining me today is Skyzo. How you doing? I'm doing well, hello YouTube. Hello. Alright, so first of all, we want to fight this guy. He drops something called a trailblazing bandana, and he has a 100% chance of doing so in the remakes. Super Nintendo... It's a fraction of a percentage, so he's not worth fighting at all. But in this one he is, and we're gonna need as much money as we can so we can casino as fast as we can. What do you say? Well, I mean, there's just a casino that I'm looking forward to since that's in the title. Yep. Also, for anyone who's in Gamblers Anonymous, um, I'm not sure what exactly the triggers are for falling off the wagon. I will say that the casino itself doesn't start until two minutes in. Uh, the minutes before that are set up for doing things optimally. And conversely, if you want to just skip to the slots, you want to go to the two minute mark. Because for this one, we're going to be doing stuff like selling and liquidating. Also, um, I'm going to try to keep the helmets. But everything else, I'm going to sell off. Because it's going to be placed by the super strong gear very soon. And, this, and the weapons and the like that aren't, you'll get them in like the next town anyway. So, so long as we can get to... 5,400 gold coins. That's what our main concern is. Okay. Sounds good. But yeah, um... This method... It can take as little as 14 minutes. And I've never had it take longer than 38 minutes either. After it started, of course. In this video, it took about 26 minutes. Which is actually pretty average. Like, astoundingly average. So average, it's unbelievable. Normally not worth it, but again, the gear that you get, the items that you get, are so absurdly good. Like, they're one of the main reasons why I chose to, out to walk through the uh, Super Nintendo version instead. Because once you get this gear, the early game is basically no challenge at all. Like, I don't even run from anything, because nothing is that much of a threat to me. Well, when in the game do you... Does the challenge catch up to you? Um... I think sometime in like the... the later mid-game, I think? Because that's when you start getting more comparable pieces of equipment and the game is sort of allowed to balance itself back around to what you generally should have. And, you know... Final Murdoch still has some fangs, even if he's not nearly as tough as before. But it does take a while. Just to clarify, you can still get all of the gear in the base game, but it just takes longer, right? Oh, hours longer. Why is that? What changed? Because in the base game, you only had one coin slot machines. This game has 10 coin slot machines and 100 coin slot machines. So the payoffs are just monstrous, monstrously bigger than they were in the base game. Now you're still more likely to lose than you are to win, but we have the power of the reset button. We are able to do gambling where we have a 100% chance of winning and a 0% chance of losing. Which is, you know, my kind of gambling. Winning the game and trying again every time seems a bit repetitive. 
Oh, it's repetitive. It's just that it saves time in the long run. Now, that said, there is technically a method for always winning. It's one that speedrunners use. However, I say technically because it's... Well, here's what you do. You... Every time you boot up your DS, you have to set your clock to zero hours and zero minutes. You then start the game. From there, you have to do frame-perfect movement to where the dealer is. Because there's a guy that deals out five cards at a poker table. And then, you have to not only have a stopwatch so that you press A at the exact right time, but you have to memorize in advance what the cards are going to be in double or nothing. And you have to memorize all that, because you have to win 16 double or nothings in order to get what you want. And the thing that really sinks it is that the exact timing of everything is different for each DS. So there's no standardized method. You have to literally test and reset and figure out everything yourself. It's like, it's so detailed that there's just no way. Like, a casual gamer is never gonna have the patience to, like, actually get a stopwatch for every time they put in Dragon Quest VI. So, if you're most people and you're not a speedrunner, you're just gonna wanna follow this method or some of the others I posted in the supplemental walkthrough. So, I'm guessing that the game picks a random scene based on your input, in addition to counting the frames and then using those numbers to generate the outcome, and that's why you need to be so precise. Yeah. A lot of RNG manipulations for DS games are based on the internal clock. That makes sense. Anyways. Uh, yeah? I'm just saying it's a big factor, the timing. Absolutely. So, what exactly we are doing is we're gonna go ahead and, like, right there, we just won. So, every time we win, for now, we want to save the game. That way, we have more chances per reset. And it's sort of a snowball effect, to where the more of a surplus you have, the more chances you get. And the more chances you get, the more likely you're going to have a big payoff. And we need about 27,000 coins to get all of what we want. Well, that sounds like a lot of time. How much time would you spend if you got really unlucky? Well, it never takes longer than 38 minutes. And it can be as short as 14 minutes. There's a lot of variants, but I've never had it take faster than 14 minutes, nor longer than 38. This video showcases a 26 minute victory. Well, it could potentially go on for much longer if you have really bad luck though, right? Well, yeah, that's how percentages work. But it that's an outlier. It's unfortunate. It is. But this is Dragon Quest. Like, the game designer was actually a gambler himself. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That sounds like a niche fact. I like it. Yeah, so when he designed Dragon Quest, he always wanted there to be an element of uncertainty. Which is why you're not allowed to save when you're inside dungeons. Like, you can only save at set locations. Because he wanted there to be that chance where if you die in a dungeon, you'll lose half your gold and you'll have to spend more gold reviving your party afterwards. So every dungeon trek has to have some tension behind it. 
it's unfortunate that he didn't account for potentially abusing the save system like this. Eh. I think he did in the Super Nintendo. I think this one was at least slightly intentional, just because he wanted to streamline the game a little bit. For most guys, it's a bit slow at the beginning, if you're not an expert like me. Oh, by the way, I want to move on to this 100 coin slot machine once I get to 600 coins or more, because then I have at least two chances of, of winning. That sounds good. So, I imagine that the highest possible outcome from gambling is just hitting the six, six sevens. And how much gold would that give you? Three million coins. Three million? Three million. Well, and you only need 3,500, so you wouldn't even have anything to spend coins on. Well, actually you would, which is part of the other reason why this is good. Now, this is an outlier factor that most guys probably won't need to worry about, but there's another casino later in the game that sells something called a Kerplunk Bracer, or as I like to call it, the Mega Monkey Bracer, because that's how Google always translates the Japanese name. But basically, if a guy is wearing this Mega Monkey Bracer, and that guy dies, the rest of the party is restored to 100% of their maximum HP, even if they're dead. So, and if you, so if you have like 20 Mega Monkey Bracers, you are virtually unkillable. And you can just mass purchase them if you have, if you have that much money. Would... Exactly. Now, again, that's not likely to happen, but it would make the bonus boss easier at the very least. Would that be the most difficult boss in the game? The bonus boss? Second most difficult boss in the game, I think. Well, actually, I guess in the remakes... Okay, so this is getting into details later on, but after Murdaugh, there's this job class system where you can progress into different job classes. The Super Nintendo requires you to be at a certain threshold for all the job classes. The remakes does not. So, from a certain perspective, he's the second hardest in the Super Nintendo, and the first hardest in the remakes, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. So what exactly makes them so difficult? Um, basically, your victory doesn't count unless you beat them in 20 turns or less. Like, you can beat them in more time than that, but you don't get anything out of it. That sounds very strange. Well, the thing of it is, if you beat this bonus boss, you can get a secret ending. But you can only get that secret ending if you beat him in 20 turns or less. So, it's like, you can beat him in more time, but it's like, what's the point? So, do you get a bad ending or something if you don't beat him? No, no, you just don't get anything at all. He's just like, haha, <laughs> you're so weak. Why don't you come back and challenge me when you get stronger? And then he just sends you back to the beginning of his dungeon. That is very strange. I've never seen anything like that before. Well, Dragon Quest is a different breed of cat. Also, I'd like to comment on how I enjoyed the new aesthetic of the game. I think how it's a so? major improvement. Well, I mean, just the depth in general, like, the perception, is just so nice to look at. It is. So this, to me, it seems like a direct improvement. 
It is in most ways, except for the soundtrack. Um, I really love the sound chip used in the Super Nintendo. Like, all the songs just have more staccato, they have more oomph to them. And some of the songs are pitched up and, and down in ways that I don't really agree, agree with. Like, you know how Murdaugh had this like this really slow, ominous, regal sounding theme whenever you faced off with him? And I imagine that was lost in compression. No, they just pitched it up. It's like do 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 Like oh. you lost the demonic edge to it. Because it sounds it's at a much higher pitch. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like a it sounds like it lost some of its edge. Like you said. It did. Now some of the songs are just fine. Like, what happened was, they made the Super Nintendo first, and then the original composer did concerts, where he did symphonic suites of all the songs he composed. And he made little tweaks here and there to some of his songs. And what the remakes did was they based the songs off the symphonic versions instead of the original. Sense, actually. It does. I can't fault them for it. I still like the Super Nintendo tracks better, though. I mean, I haven't heard the... I can't really tell the difference. Maybe it's more subtle. You know, I have no idea. I think lots of folks are very variable in how they perceive sound, so I wouldn't know... I wouldn't be able to say yes or no to that observation. Well, to elaborate a little bit, I do notice that it's different, but to me the change seems so small in comparison that it doesn't make much of a difference, but that's just me. Hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think you've heard any of the radically different tracks yet, because like, like the casino theme, for example, it's mostly the same, except that in the Super Nintendo, there's this sort of human sounding, like it sounds like a human is going do 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 It's just, you don't know, because we never visited the casino when you were there. It was Dark Knight 97 back then. But yeah, uh, back to the remakes, to be perfectly honest, they are a direct improvement. The script is way better. Like, like way better. Like, the dialogue sounds like it was written by an actual English speaker and not just awkwardly translated from a different language, like, like the translation we're using. And there's a lot more of it, too. Pretty much the further back you go, the worse the translations become. That's just a trend yeah. for old games. Yeah. Definitely. And here's here's something neat. There's a party chat option. So if you press the B button at different points in the game, your party members will actually comment on what's happening throughout the game. Like, Carver has this sort of, uh, slangy, well, I guess that was unfortunate then, don't you think, and everything like that, and has this rough, masculine, woodsman way of speaking. Nilia is more soft and gentle, but straightforward about things. Ashlyn is all spunky and everything. Uh, and Nevin's like this bookworm. Like, it's really cool, and they have it for, like, everything like a random npc will just say something like uh oh no uh, my girlfriend said to meet me here but 
Actually, she said we meet over there. And then they have quips even for that. Like, it's so thorough. That sounds like a lot of work. Can you imagine just having like, potentially thousands of events in game? You have to code in all the text. That just sounds like so much work. I appreciate it. It is. Like, oh, by the way, you know that four blue berry thing we saw before? That seems to be about the last semi-common payoff during this whole thing. So now that I've got 6,000 coins, I want to only save if I get 2,000 more coins than what I had last time. And I want to reset every time I lose more than 6,000. Because the payoff of the blue bear four blue berries is 6,000, and it's like the last combination I see with any kind of frequency. Once you lose more than 6,000, it's like, okay, I can keep going, but I've already lost so much, I may as well just reset anyway. That makes sense. Although I noticed that the pricings on the left for the prizes, on the left or right side actually, on yeah. the gambling machine, slot machine, I mean, yeah. They are not the same as the prices that you mentioned. So, what's up with that? Prices that I mentioned? You see it. Let me actually... Yeah, so see on the right side, like, there's a second screen, right? It shows you what yeah. payoff is. There's yeah. Not, there's no, like, 6,000. So don't see it. Okay, so what's happening is I'm betting 300 coins on the one arrow, the two arrow, and the three arrow. And that 300 is multiplied by the amount you see on the right. So, so I have 300 on one of the arrows, and if I get four blue berries on one of those arrows, the outcome is 300 times 20. And that adds up to 6,000 coins. Okay, I can see how it can snowball now. The more you get, the more chances you get, like you said. Yeah. That's pretty nice. It is. So I guess it kind of depends on how long the initial snowballing amount takes. Because like I said, this method can go anywhere from 14 to 38 minutes. So I guess it's kind of a function of how lucky do you get at the beginning. Now, how much... How many coins can you spend or like bet in a single take? 900. So you're constantly spending 900 coins to get the maximum amount? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Now, um, the other thing about the remakes is that it's a lot more streamlined. Like, each regular enemy, apart from metal slime monsters and bosses, they give 120% the amount of experience and gold they normally gave. So, you're always at a slightly higher level than you are in the Super Nintendo. And plus there's just always a, there's a lot of quality of life things too, like you can use items from your bag. Like I don't have to swap different NPC, different party members to the front like I always am in the Super Nintendo. Because if I get an item from a chest with the wrong character, like a stat seed, I then have to go into the menu, transfer that item to the other person, which causes the menu to close, I then have to open the menu again, and then use that item. Like, there's no annoyances like that in the remakes. That's a good improvement. So, oh, and finally, the party AI is way better. And you can set different party members to different AIs. Like, 
In the Super Nintendo version, it's all or nothing. Everyone is either on follow orders, or they're on show no mercy, or they're on watch my back, or... Or it's either all of your party members are on a setting, or none of them are. The remakes allow you to do it for each person, so you have more flexibility in how they act. Which also makes the game easier. Wait, this is confusing to me. So you, you don't actually pick any moves for them. You just... I guess you sit back and you... I don't, I don't get it. How does it work? Yeah, you just pick a setting for them and sit back. Um, unless you put them all on follow orders. And that's... That's when you select all their moves individually. Now, for most of the boss fights you saw, I'm on follow orders, but like for a lot of the random battles I edited out, I have them on an AI setting, because it's faster that way. Oh, okay. That's the whole purpose of the thing, is to speed up grinding. Exactly. But... In the remakes, it allows you enough flexibility to where it's oftentimes practical for boss fights, too. Especially since, in the remakes, characters will actually use items in their inventory. Like, for example, with the Murdoch fight, I had that Staff of Ghent in Carver's inventory. But in the Super Nintendo, they never use items like... If they had a choice between an elixir that restored 999 hit points and MP for free, or they had a heal spell that restored 30 and cost 2 MP, they would use the heal spell because they just ignore items outright. Unless you're controlling them directly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I caught that. So, like, the only reason I chose the Super Nintendo was, one, the tasking tools were a lot more sophisticated and developed, so I could have much better menuing and navigation. Like, I don't manipulate lock or anything, but I want my videos to look clean and professional. So I chose the Super Nintendo for that reason. But the other thing is that it's like, it's so much harder in a lot of ways, and I wanted my strategies to apply to both versions. Something mentions that you better not manipulate luck, but to me, this method of obtaining as much coin as possible, that doesn't seem like it's much different. But maybe I'm missing something. I'm not sure I understand what you mean, to be honest. Well, you told me that... Um, you told me that... Okay, so manipulating luck is bad. But then, once you lose your coins, then you can just reload the save and restart. So, how much different is that? The difference is that you have to decide whether or not the time investment is worth it. Because, like, I'm having to reset every time I lose. And, you know, if this were the Super Nintendo, I would spend so much time resetting that it's, like, it's not worth it at all. It's true, but since it is worth it, then it seems to me like it's a less efficient way of manipulating luck. But I'm not manipulating anything. I'm still getting the bad luck. I'm just negating the effects of it. That all said, though, like, and that's actually kind of the reason why I didn't want to speed up the video, because, like, even though this does save more time than you lose, it's still kind of boring. So it's like, if you're the viewer, and you're looking at this, and you're like, okay, I trust you, but this still doesn't look fun at all. You can just go ahead and use the Super Nintendo strats and have those work for you, you know? That makes sense. Uh, okay, so anyways, I, need to, I want to get two Platinum Mails for Rex and Carver. Now, the Platinum Mails 
reduce spell damage by negative 15, by, uh, I mean, 15 points. And the dragon shields reduce fire and ice breath damage by 15 points as well. So like with final Murdaugh, and by the way, they have a lot of defense too. And Egret Drasil leaves revive people automatically to 100. And I want six of those. Uh, anyways, though, so like for final Murdaugh, Chili Breath would do 35 to 45 instead of 50 to 60 to everyone. And his Lightning, it would do, what was it? Yes, 20 to 30 damage instead of 35 to 45. So it makes final Murdaugh so much easier. And we want to get 20 Silk Tuxedos to make up for all the uh, cash that we spent. And after that, if we have any left over, we want to spend it on up to 20 Magic Waters, because those restore our MP midway into the dungeon. Now, Silk Tuxedos, 52,500 coins. I am essentially Bill Gates now. And look at the defense in the upper right corner. That is how ludicrous Platinum Mail is at this point in the game, and Dragon Shields. Defense at 120? Yeah, because the defense is so high. But it seems that this game um, screws up with the difficulty, as opposed to the Super Nintendo version. Well, I think the thing is, you kind of have to know about all this, because, like, I'm an expert at this game, whereas I think if you're a new player, it doesn't really occur to you just what you can do. Well, I mean, you would still have... You would still see, me, see the benefits of a... You know, the enemy nerfs and whatnot. I'd imagine that would make a big difference. <sighs> well, in any case, this has been Fiona Day Quester signing out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, um, please consider giving it a like. Uh, if you want to see more content, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to share what you thought, feel free to comment as well, because I love reading them. Have a nice day and God bless. Okay, see you, YouTube.